Hello and welcome back. It's Professor Hendricks and today I'd like to talk to you about KMERS. So a KMER is a generalization of our mononucleotide content or dinucleotide content. So those are going up in, in terms of length and so if you wanted to consider sequences of length 3 or 4 or 5 or more generally some arbitrary length k, the concept that we need is a KMER. And so let's start off by introducing a few ideas. If I define this DNA sequence here and it has a length of 21, um, can ask ourselves how many sequences of length 3 are there in this sequence of length 21? Well, we have to be careful what we mean by that. Non-overlapping KMERS is shown in this top example. We're considering these windows of length 3 that don't overlap, and so this might be an example where we're looking at codons, and we're only considering a specific reading frame, and we want to count how many triplets there are, how many codons there are. Under this type of example, the, the result that may define my k in this case, in this case k is equal to 3, so the number of distinct k-mers that I might want to consider is, is going to be the length divided by k. And so this gives us a floating point. If we want to convert this to an int, we can actually do something called integer division, which is actually more to the point what we want in this example, because this returns the int quotient without the remainder when dividing those two numbers. So that's really useful. If we wanted to loop through and print out all these distinct KMERS, we might want to do something like this. So we might want to do 4i in range. And in this case, our range, we just want to do the len of, of our DNA sequence. And we're definitely going to want to start at 0, and that's the default option, but I'll put it here explicitly anyway. And in this case, we also want to increment by 3. And so let's see what happens if we do this. And so if I, if I try this out, and maybe I'll print the position i or the index i. And the best way to write a kmer starting at position i and having a length k is i colon i plus k. And that's kind of nice because um, the way you can think about that is in, if we're in, in the way Python does things where the end position is not included, this would include position i, i.e., in other words, i plus 0 i plus 1, i plus 2, up to but not including i plus k. So in the case of k equals 3, that's plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, i.e. three total positions. And in general, for a sequence of length k, it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on up to k minus 1, which would be a total of k characters. So this is a nice way to compactly represent a k-mer starting in position i and having of length k. So if I print, print return, I can see that the last one is nicely represented as the TAG. Now, that's exactly what's going on in this instance. Now, what about this instance where the, where the sequence is not uh, an exact multiple of 3? Um, in this case, it's 21 uh, plus 1, so 22 nucleotides. So if I go back and redefine my DNA sequence, and I'll add an extra character, and I'll see if this equation still holds up or this for loop still holds up. If I print like this, I can see that I get this extra term at the end. And I, I don't really want to consider that because that's not part of my reading frame. That's not part of um, the, the KMERS that I want to consider because the, the window, that, that window of length k, is actually overhanging the end of the sequence. And so I want to exclude those types of scenarios. So I might want to consider what is the last index that I want to actually examine. And let's think about that in general terms. So I want to make sure that my end is at least one greater than the last index that I could conceivably want to include. The way we might do that is perhaps best illustrated by now considering overlapping KMERS. And we'll come back to this non-overlapping KMERS and see how we define that end position. So in the case of overlapping KMERS, I'm looking at this lower drawing. So this is all possible sequences of length k, regardless of whether they're in frame with the starting sequence of length k. And this might be a situation where I'm doing motif finding. I want to more generally describe the KMER content of my sequence. And, you know, this is like a situation where I want to know what KMERs are statistically enriched in my sequence. For example, a, pr a promoter sequence. And if I define my starting point at a particular position, I might miss all the k that I'm interested in because they're out of frame with 
the original one, like, like is in this example. So I want to consider all possible tailors. And the best way to, to think about that is, think about what are the possible start positions. So you can see that there are, there are seven windows in the first row. And then if you count the second row, you can see that there is six because we're excluding the overhanged position. In the third row, there's also six. So seven plus six plus six is gonna give us 12 plus seven, and that's gonna give us uh, 19. So if we look at our indices, we can see that these indices start at position at index zero in a Python zero-based index. And because this is of length 21, that means the last index must be 20. So the last index of a string of length L is always L minus one in a zero-based system. So if this is index 20, then this is index 19, and this is index 18. So the last Kamer starting position that I wanted to consider here was position 18. And you can think about that is if the length is 21 and the Kamer is three, we can see that the last index I want to consider is L minus K. And so 21 minus three in this case gives us 18, and that's the last index we want to consider. And in Python substrings, I want to go up to, um, if I want to include this, this 18, I want to add one, because I know that this end position of Python is not included. So I want to add one to that to make sure that I, that I do include the index of 18. So what I would do is I would do L minus K plus one. So I'm going to change this three to a K to, to illustrate the more general concept here. And so if I were to do this, so then I know that in this example, this is 21 minus three plus one. And that ex in that example, that gives us 21 minus three is 18 plus one is 19. So it's going to go up to, but not including 19. That's exactly what I want because the last conceivable start position is 18. So if I do this and print these out, then it works out that I get the TAG is the last distinct start position. Um, or the last start position in that series. So that, that, that all checks out. So for example, I could try adding one more nucleotide and try this out for the non-overlapping case. And again, it stops to include the TAG. And then if I add one more, say CAT, and try this one last time, see if it checks out in the case of, it, it now includes the CAT. So this works out really nicely um, as a way of looping through all the non-overlapping camers. So that's the non-overlapping camers, this top row, and this is an illustration of the case of 22 characters. You can see that these windows stop short of including this last nucleotide because that's not a full camer of length k. So now let's go back to these overlapping camers. How do we loop through and include all possible overlapping camers? Well, now that we've seen that, previous example, it kind of makes some sense. So the last conceivable starting position that we want to consider would be, um, if this is our last index, it's going to be our length minus one. This would be length minus two. This would be length minus three. In the case of k-mers of length three, then that would be length minus k. But we want to, um, so the last index we want to consider is length minus k. But if we want to use this in a Python for loop, we want to add one to that because we know that the end positions are not included. So by adding one, we make sure that we include the L minus K position. So let's look at this example to further illustrate this. This is sequence of length 22, and we wanna know what is the last conceivable start position for a Kamer, or a Kamer of length three in this example. It's gonna be this one illustrated right here. And so if this is of length 22, then the last index is going to be one minus that, so 21. So this is 21, 20, 19. So the last start position we want to consider is 19. 22 minus three is 19. Adding one to make sure that that 19 is included. Let's see this as an equation. So for those of you that are maybe mathematically inclined, um, if we're considering the non-overlapping k-mers, like in the codon example, it's going to be the length divided by k, but I've also put this inside of a floor function, so that just gives us the, the whole number um, result of the length divided by k, so we're excluding the remainders here. 
But if we're considering overlapping k-mers, this is the number of distinct k-mers that we want to we want to include. And if you're in Python, then we might represent this as l minus k in integer division, and similarly l minus k plus one for the overlapping case. Now, perhaps there's something confusing there. Or if the total number of k-mers is l minus k plus one, but the last index we want to consider is l minus k, that may be a little bit confusing. But that has to do with zero-based indices, the fact that we're subtracting one to convert to zero-based indices. But we still want to use length minus k plus one as the end of our range function because of Python, the end is not included. So let's just see this in example. So I'm going to go back to defining my DNA sequence the way I had originally. Let me just remove that so that should work. Length of 21. So if I want to consider all overlapping k-mers, then I might do 4i in range of zero comma len of DNA minus K plus one. And I wanna use a step size of one because all possible positions are potentially valid start positions as indicated by this. Every single one of these nucleotides is the start of one of these windows. So therefore, this is the range that I think I want. And I might print again, same thing, I DNA of I colon I plus K. And so in this case, it goes up to and including this last one, TAG, so that checks out. And if I now add one to my nucleotide sequence, so this makes it of length 22, whoops, length 22, and I go back and redo my for loop in the exact same way, print these out. And now it goes up to the AGC, so it properly included that last triplet. Sequence of length 22, the last index should be 21 because we're dealing with zero-based coordinates, so it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 21 for a sequence of length 22. So if this is index of 21, then this is index of 20, and this last one is an index of 19. So 22 minus k is, in this example, 19, i.e. 22 minus 3, but I want to add 1 to that because I know that the end position in Python is not included, so I want to go one more than the last possible index that I want to consider, and that's why this works in pretty much every case. And so I could try one more example, adding an additional character, and so the last kmer should be GCA, and print these out, and lo and behold, there it is. And so that, in a nutshell, is how to count kmers in a sequence of length L, whether you're considering the non-overlapping case or the overlapping case. So with that, I'll end this lecture, and I'll see you next time.